the song is and we gather today to bring us back to some normalcy and the good news is that these sections are for those who would like to not observe social distancing and no wearing of masks but you can still if you want it's an option but we designated this section for those who still would like to observe social distancing and wearing masks. And so today we come with confidence that God, who is the master of all, is in control. That even in the midst of pandemic, we can now return in some normalcy and celebrate as a community of faith, trusting that things will be better. I also would like to take this opportunity to share with you a joyful uh, occasions in my life, having celebrated 67th year of being brought into this world yesterday and tomorrow will be my 41st year of my ordination anniversary. So it's something to be grateful to our God who is truly almighty. And in that spirit, And in the spirit of joy, we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. With your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we're reminded of the human or earthly fathers that we have, who are people we can trust and have confidence, and so is our God, the Father, more so because he is truly merciful and kind. And therefore, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary of her Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
that we may always revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. The Lord addressed Job out of the storm and said, Who shut within doors the sea when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling bands? When I set limits for it and fastened the bar of its door and said, Thus far shall you come, but no farther. And here shall your proud waves be stilled. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, the love of Christ impels us once we have come to the conviction that one died for all. Therefore, all have died. He indeed died for all, so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Consequently, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even if we once knew Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him no longer. So whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On that day, as evening drew on, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us cross to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took Jesus with them in the boat, just as he was and other boats were with him. A violent squall came up and waves were breaking over the boat so that it was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern, asleep in a cushion. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet, be still. The wind ceased, and there was great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe, and said to one another, Who then is this, whom even wind and see, obey. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus. The readings today from the book of Job, from the Old Testament, even from the book of Psalms, and the Gospel affirm and reaffirm our belief that God truly is all-powerful, omnipotent, almighty. And in fact, that's what we pray every time we celebrate the Mass during the recitation of the Creed. And we, know that we have to know that the Creed sums up what we believe as Catholic Christians, what the Church teaches, what God has revealed to the world about himself and the meaning of life for all of us. Unfortunately, most of us have become so used to the creed that we often fail to consider the important truths that it contains. Today's gospel passage gives us an opportunity to do just that, reaffirm 
our belief that God is almighty. And so towards the beginning of the Nicene Creed, we pray, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. And that word almighty is synonymous for all-powerful, omnipotent. And that is our Lord. He alone is all-powerful, and nothing is impossible for him. Nothing is difficult for him. God teaches Job this lesson in today's first reading that we heard. Job has been complaining about all the bad, the bad things that have been happening to him. Remember, he had all these possessions, and all of a sudden, one by one thing, at, uh, one, one by one, all this disappeared. He lost everything. And God answers by remaining, by reminding him that the Lord is master even of those bad things that he controls and limits them according to his omnipotence with omnipotent wisdom the ocean in the old testament because of its mystery power and unpredictability was often used as a symbol of evil and chaos but god tells job that he has set limits for it and fast and fastened the bar of its door as we heard in the first reading today's psalm takes up the same theme poetically explaining how god's calmed how god calmed the storm to a gentle breeze and brought the terrified sailors to their desired haven and peace even when from a merely human perspective everything seemed lost. And the gospel gives us a close-up view of God's effortless control of the seemingly most violent forces on earth with just a word. Jesus makes the wind and the sea obey. Notice how St. Mark mentions both the wind and the sea. The, the sea stands for the realm below the earth, below mankind's dwelling place, and the wind stands for the sky, the realm above the earth. And Jesus, the Almighty Lord, in whom we believe, is master of them all. To fully grasp the awesome power of Christ that is displayed in this gospel scene we need to activate our imagination. Few situations leave people so helpless and despairing as, storm, as storms at sea. The Sea of Galilee, if many, some of you probably have visited that place, I've been there twice, and we, uh, the, the group were, went, came into the boat and we crossed the Sea of Galilee and recited or read this gospel passage about the crossing and the squall that happened. Where the disciples were sailing in this case, and it's still known for the violence of its squalls, they know that, which arise and subside rapidly and unpredictably due to its peculiar geographical situation. And this is, again, from... A geologist and described it how it happens. It is located at the bottom of a long funnel created by rows of mountains to the north. Air traveling through the narrowing valley bursts onto the sea with the explosive force of a flash flood squeezed through like a garden hose that we use you know, watering the plants. In the midst of these gales, the forces of nature unleash their full terrifying violence, and human fragility is nakedly exposed. This experience of utter helplessness is what today's psalm tries to express. 
His command raised up a storm, raised up a storm wind, which tossed its waves on high. They mounted up to heaven. They sank to the depths. Their hearts melted away in their plight. They cried to the Lord in their distress. And then we sing the responsorial psalm. St. Mark makes it quite clear that the disciples, many of whom were fishermen by trade and familiar with boats and sea storms, feared for their lives. So we can safely assume that this storm was no minor agitation, that a mere word from the Lord stops the nature's primeval power, shocks the helpless fishermen even more than the stormy sea had frightened them just moments before. They had seen the Lord's miracles. They had heard his wisdom. They had witnessed his power over the human heart. But to see the strongest storm wind obey like my dog Adobo, when I command him. This was, a lord, this was a lordship they had not yet even conceived of. This is the lordship of God and Savior, Jesus Christ. We should be encouraged by this reminder that our God, our eternal Father, who loves us and is always watching over us, is indeed all-powerful Almighty. And today, when we pray the creed, let us relish those words, praying them right from the heart. We believe, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, etc. But how can we apply this beautiful and encouraging turn or truth to our daily lives? St. Ignatius of Loyola, the 16th century knight turned priest who founded the Jesuits' religious order, has a good piece of advice in this regard. He said, as Christians should, pray as if everything depended on God, but work as if everything depended on oneself yourself and myself. This sounds like a contradiction, but it is not. When life's storms bother us, our families, our communities, especially during this pandemic, our first response should always be the same as the, re the response of the apostles in today's gospel. They went to Jesus, woke him up, and place their confidence in him through sincere, or for us, to approach Jesus then, wake him up as well, and pray sincerely, heart to heart, to him. He will hear us because he is always listening. And then, having put the situation in God's hands, the best way to show him that we truly trust him is to confidently do whatever we can to help achieve the outcome we think is best. And God will make it come true for us. And so this reminds me of how I considered my earthly father, who is now deceased, and put my confidence in him as, a, as I was growing up. He was the one who kind of put us together, all the children around the table, and he would say, what do you want to be when you grow up? And it came to my turn, and I said, at age five, I want to be a priest. And I trusted my father that he will support me in that, and so he did, and so are my, my mother and the rest of my family that at the early age, 13 years old, I entered into seminary. Once again, like any fathers we have, for those uh, who um, have really supported their children, know that we are not fearful and doubtful when they give us advice. And that's true to my, my relationship with my father, as we honor all fathers here. 
And he reminded me of God being the father that he is. Just like my, my father who encouraged me. And so I went to the seminary and came to the United States after eight years back in the Philippines and finished my four years in theology. Again, trusting that my family, especially my father, would be there to support me and lead me on. And so the day came when I was, I felt the hands of Colonel Manning, who ordained me 41 years ago tomorrow. And, uh, and here I am, you know, grateful for what my father, my earthly father, had done and shown me so that I can continue on and even live on to, to my vocation for many, many years. And I take this opportunity to, to thank all the fathers for being that for your children, someone they can truly trust and have confidence. And if this is true for even fathers who have their own shortcomings, how much more our God to put our trust and confidence and truly believe that he can do everything because he is all my With renewed confidence, let us now pray the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was the incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God can do all things and eagerly wishes to answer our prayers. That the work of the church touch all humanity with healing and nourishment, we pray to the Lord. That fathers and husbands cherish their children cherish their wives and protect their children and act as, act as, as a source of strength in their neighborhoods and communities, we pray to the Lord. Lord that the Holy Spirit guide the church leaders, our church leaders, as, they, as we reopen our churches here in the Archdiocese of Los Angeles, we pray to the Lord. Lord that all those who are dealing with any type of suffering, may God always stay with them and give them comfort through difficult times 
We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For those who are sick and all in need of healing, especially Yolanda Rogers, Tom Rogers, Ron Buckley, Judy Buckley, and Carson Patol Patado. And all those members of our community who are still in the hospitals or at home bedridden, that they may receive grace and strength from our loving God, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Francisco Gachalian, Cono Cristiano, John Ariano, Juanita de la Cruz, Clarence Ayers, Socrates Inonog, Flaviano Gardel, and Floranti Gardel, that they may receive the promise of everlasting life. And for those who died recently, particularly for Rosemary De Rose, Erlinda Laurenti Boising, and Michael Jones, that they find rest from their labors and peace in the loving embrace of our God, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. And for our own intentions that we not pray in silence. For all these, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Grateful to God for blessing us with couples who are celebrating their anniversary. One couple in our midst are celebrating their 57th anniversary of their marriage. So I would like to call on them, Larry and Joni Egan, so that we can ask the Lord to continue to bless you on behalf of this parish community. And anyone who, couples who are celebrating their anniversary during this month, uh, may this blessing be extended to, to you. And so if you are um, that couple, please also join your hands as I ask Larry and Johnny to please join your hands. And most of your uh, children are out of town, right? Okay. Almighty and eternal God, you have so exalted the unbreakable bond of marriage that it has become the sacramental sign of your son's union with the church at his, as his spouse. May I ask now everyone to please impose your right hand over Larry and Joni. Look with favor on Larry and Joni, whom you have united in marriage as they ask for your help and the protection of the Virgin Mary. They pray that in good times and in bad, they will grow in love for each other for many more years. That they will resolve to be of one heart in the bond of peace. Lord, in their struggles, let them rejoice that you are near to help them. In their needs, let them know that you are there to rescue them. In their joys, let them see that you are the source and completion of every happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Congratulations, Larry and Joni. Now you can seal it with a kiss. Congratulations. Please sit down. I prepare the gifts. This is an opportune time for sharing your blessings. And baskets are placed around the church so you can express that gratitude and offer that for the support of our faith community. And thank you once again for your loving support and generosity. to the 
Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. We praise and glory of his name, our and the walls of the church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you came to the aid of your mortal beings with your divinity and even fashion for us a remedy out of, mort of mortality itself, that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith When we eat this bread and drink this cup 
We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Peter Claver and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace.
little instruction before we do communion. We'll have two lines in the middle aisle, since we're not observing social distancing here. And the same thing here, we'll have two lines. But on this side, we'll have one line. Two ministers in the middle and one minister on each side. Um, I mean, what else? So we'll start from the, from the front to the back. And we will continue doing so until further notice. Um, so again, for those who are on this side, you don't have to wear a mask when you receive communion. And then please return to your places. For those joining us for um, live streaming, the communion prayer uh, act of spiritual communion will be posted on the screen. So I will not say that, just say that yourselves privately. And today is the last day for drive through communion. And they will be, and then after then, there will be, we cancel the drive through communion. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see the face of God and live. Be not afraid. I go before you always. Come, follow
like me. I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May I ask that you please sit down once again? Announcements for this week. And we began with um, novena to all fathers, especially those whose names we offer on the altar, both living and deceased. For the nine day novena masses. Next week, our parish will take up the Peter Spence annual collection to support the universal church and the work of Pope Francis to carry out his charitable works. Our donations will benefit our brothers and sisters on the margins of society, including victims of war, oppression, and disasters. Envelope, envelopes for this purpose are in the pews and chairs. And once again, thank you for your generosity. Our summer Bible enrichment, The Living Word and You, continues on Wednesday evenings through August. Please see the bulletin for details and the website that we have. Registration for 2021-2022 elementary faith formation season is open. 
please contact the Faith Formation Office to sign up. Also, we ask that you sign up for the Mission of Mercy after Mass and make a difference for the elderly, the homeless, and families of incarcerated animals in our local shelters and more as we rise from this pandemic and the team of Divine Mercy, uh, Missions of Mercy are waiting for, for us outside. With a loving way to honor and remember our fathers, both living and deceased, by offering masses for their intention during the nine-day novena masses during this month of June, and they're available at the exits of the church. As of June 19th, which was yesterday, the dispensation from the obligation to attend Sunday Mass and Holy Days of Obligation in response to coronavirus pandemic has been lifted for Catholic faithful of the Archdiocese of Los Angeles. For those who have, who have serious and legitimate reason, such as illness, underlying health conditions that render them susceptible to illness or significant fears of becoming ill are exempt. Beginning Monday, June 21st, the church will be open for prayer and visits into the Blessed Sacrament Chapel from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. every day. Also, confessions will be, will be held here inside the church now, not in the confessional rooms, but uh, Father Lewis stay on that side and I stay on this side and it's cooler inside. Okay. Also, um, as I mentioned already, the drive through communion will be uh, canceled. Today will be the last. Mass will be live streamed only at 8 a.m. Mass on Sundays. No more live streaming of daily Masses from Monday to Saturday. All liturgical ministers currently serving and anyone interested to join a ministry, we invite you to come to return night sessions or welcome back sessions here in the church at 7 p.m. as follows. This is the schedule. On Tuesday, June 22nd, the session will be for ordinary, extraordinary ministers of the Eucharist and those who bring communion to the sick. Tuesday, June 22nd. And on Wednesday, June 23rd, will be for all ushers and greeters. On Thursday, June 24th, for lectors and commentators. And on Friday, June 25th, for altar servers, both serving and those who are interested. So if you are parents of altar, altar server aides children, please encourage them. We need um, your support. We need volunteers. After pandemic, you know, many of our ministers have kind of uh, suggested that they might not be able to serve because we're still in coronavirus. But we, we open it. So this week, those are the, the evenings. It's also, I believe, printed in the bulletin. So please consult and join us. And so thank you for the volunteers, our ushers who help us welcome you today for our music ministry. Thank you, Debbie and Larry and Cindy, for making this truly a welcoming back to, as we return to normalcy. Thank you very much for your service. And And for our tech team doing, once again, live streaming this Mass so that our community, or those who are vulnerable and are not able to join us because of their, their homebound or ill, that they can celebrate Mass with us. And before we conclude the Mass, this is part of our tradition now. We didn't do it last year because we didn't have a chance or we were not given that opportunity. But we would like to honor four special fathers in the midst of our community here. The first father that, that we would like to recognize is the oldest. If you are a father who is now 85 years old and older, please stand up. No. 85 years and older. Oh, there's only one. Okay, good.
So if I may ask, how young are you? How old are you? Let me... 89. On behalf of... On behalf of St. Peter, Peter Claver Parish Community, we congratulate you. And you, can you tell me your name again first, please? Your name? Arthur Toasty. Arthur Toasty. Arthur Toasty. Arthur Toasty. Thank you. Congratulations. The, the second father we would like to honor is the father who is present here and brought many children with you. So is there a father here who has three children that you brought and, oh, and, oh, and, and many more? Three or more, please stand. You brought here into, present in the church. That is present in the church. Three or more. All right. <laughs> we'll have two here. How many do you have? Three. And how many do you have? Three. And how many do you have? Four. Three. Three also. And how many? Tell me, please. How many? Three. Woo. <laughs> Who has the youngest child that you brought in here? I mean, as far as of, of those three, how, how old is the youngest? 13, how old is the youngest? 16, how old is the youngest? Five? Oh, 10. How old is the youngest? 10 months. 10 months. Give 10 two. months, all right. <laughs> Congratulations. All right. to, on behalf of the parish community, we thank you for bringing your children and do more of this often, all right, every Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. And I know your children will serve as well, right? Thank you. Your name again? Angel Torres. Congratulations. The next father we would like to honor is the father who just had a child recently. Baby who is <laughs> who is five and below. Five and below. <laughs> How old is the baby? Ten? Ten. Ten months old? Ten. Yeah. There's one who was uh, in the back having baby holding the baby. She is uh, wearing black. I think that baby is even younger. Did they leave already? Was it the baby you're, that you were carrying? Yes. Oh, it was you. Yes. All right. <laughs> so we would like to share this with another father. How about the father who has a lot of children working so hard? How many, uh, if, if you're a father of five and over children, five numbers, and many more, please stand. If you are a father of five, so we got two. Pierre, how many do you have? Five? How many do you have? Five as well. <laughs> <laughs> now, we'll see who is the, the first one who did it. How old is your oldest? 36. And your oldest? 35. <laughs> I'll give it to the older one, all right? Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations, Pierre. Appreciate it. Last but not the least, I'd like to, we would like to honor the father who has a child who, who is in the priesthood or studying in the priesthood or who is a nun. Do you have your father here, sister? <laughs> <laughs> and you have a son, right? A priest. All right, Jose, thank you. This is Father. Eddie is the father of John Paul 
who celebrated 25 years, is that it? Congratulations, Ed. Ed. Fifteen years of priesthood. Congratulations. Yes, and he is the son of Saint Peter Claver. So, so thank you, Ed. And these honorees that we give gifts to represent the rest of the father. So I would like to call on all the fathers or men who have, in a way or another, or will be new father, to please stand so that we can bless you. And if you are, or oh, maybe, please stand, everyone. And if you are with, your, with that person, the father who is here, or soon to be father or man who had cared for children, this is, our, this is a blessing for you. And it may I ask women and children to please impose your right hands over your husband or anyone. If your father is not here, imagine that he is here. If you are with your father, make sure that you touch or hold on to, to him. Put your arm around him or hold on to his hand as we say this blessing. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you made all things. Bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers through the inspiration of Saint Joseph. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their daughters and sons, may honor them always with a spirit of profound respect. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Give them a hug and a kiss if you can. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. from their wicked hands. Beneath the shadow of his wings I will rejoice to find a dwelling place secure. Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord, the God of mercy, the God who saves. I shall not fear the dark of night.